Hey guys, and welcome to uh, another Centurion 7 slash 1 replay post game commentary. So, I'm going to be giving you some after battle analysis. Now, the Centurion, as you know, in this kind of a situation on El Haluf, I always like to go down to the H7 area in my medium tanks. But the Centurion's top speed is 40. Downhill, it can go up to 50, as you can see here. Now, this is very important. Watch my approach, okay? Using these bushes, we can hide our spot from the scout. Unfortunately, we knocked down a tree there, which told the enemy where we were. Then that second row of bushes that you just saw will hide my approach again from the ridgeline. And look where we get spotted. We only get spotted now, which gives the enemy very little time to be able to uh, get their shots on us. So you can use that approach using those double layers of bushes to try and mask your approach as well as possible, which can allow you in slower tanks such as the Centurion and even some heavy tanks to be able to get down into an early position. And really, I I can't emphasize how important this position is on El Haluf. Um, many of you might remember back in the day before they remodeled the North, that the North was an absolute death trap. And so really, the South part on this map used to be very, very, very important. And I learned how to play down here and really I don't want to leave it. Okay, so I'm using my sixth sense. I haven't been spotted, haven't been spotted. I'm pretty safe. I see that I have a shot on the VK. I really shouldn't stop here looking back on it. What a donkey to stop here. But anyway, we readjust our position. And using the accuracy of the 20 pounder I hasten to add that I'm using, we put one into the VK. And we put two into the VK with a great rate of fire. So, you guys just heard that I'm using the 20 pounder on this tank. That's because it has nearly an extra 33% DPM over the 1, 1, sorry, over the 105 millimeter. Yeah. So, that makes a huge difference in my opinion. I like my tanks to be punchy with high DPM, able to fight themselves out of situations through aggression and killing the enemy. The 105... Maybe it would be a hell of a lot better against tier 10 tanks with the huge amount of penetration that you get. And also you have the flexibility to fire Hesh ammo at certain tanks. But even with Hesh ammo, your DPM is actually lower than if you were using AP rounds on the 20 pounder. And the 20 pounder rounds are pretty cheap. And your aim time is much, much, much quicker with the 20 pounder. So you could come out, shoot, move, shoot, move, shoot, move, shoot, move. And your accuracy on the move is better. I think that the 105 personally for me is, is better on a, a tier 10 tank unless you're the kind of player who likes to play very carefully and snipe and try to avoid all fire and like to put long range shots in on high tier tanks. But in this kind of a matchup the 20 pounder really just absolutely rocks the game. So we've spotted that there's a Lerve up there. Looking at his stats he's their best player so I didn't really want to mess around with him. I'm going over here to try and get an improved angle. And here we go, is the T-54. Look at the accuracy on the move of this tank. Blau like straight through the tracks on the side. T-54 gets a very good shot off on us, but thanks to our high rate of fire, we're able to get another shot into him. He fires into our tracks. We'd make another shot on the move at the Lerve. I don't really want to stay in this position, but as you can see, our artillery flew lured them out into the open, they came out to try and get shots on us, and then our three artillery shells landed with precision. And their best player is already out the game instantly. Sucks to be him. Alright, so, we know that T-54 was up there, he's been crippled a little bit. We're going to try and use this corner to basically keep spotting, it looks like our artillery a little hot. We get an unfortunate bounce on his lower plate there. I know that I reload faster, so I know I can get a shot in and pull back. So I'm going to dictate the, the pace of the combat here. That's my plan. I know for every time he shoots, I get to shoot or shoot twice, basically, and still be safe. So he's fired, so I know I can come out, place one in him, and I should have been able to pull back there, but I was too slow getting up the slope. But I know I can fire a second in and then pull back because he's fired. We unfortunately make a bad shot there, but we know we can reload before he does. As you can see, pull back and he's fired again, so I'm going to go and make another shot onto him. He's not playing very well, this T-54. And he fired again! Oh dear. 
just made him look like uh, an idiot. But if I was using the 105, I would have been able to trade very differently with the T-54. But in theory, he would have been able to shoot me twice for every time I shot him. So he might have been able to dictate the combat. Wow, okay, we can see a Lorraine going YOLO to try and catch the T-69 that's behind me. I'm going to spot him because there's a lot of people on the other side of the ridge, so I decide to go down after him. He's in a very vulnerable position here, and I want to get some aggression going. We put in a cheeky shot into the Lorraine's backside, and the T-69 is holding his position. I track the T-32. I'm looking to see where his turret's facing, and now he's facing at me. Oh no, he's not. He's actually looking the other way. And he's just letting me open him up now. So we put one right through his engine. And he burned to death with a rather tasty 503 fire damage. Meaning that we did 1,400 to that T-32 in such a short period of time. The DPM on this Centurion is really, really, really fantastic with the 20 pounder. And another bit of beta damage. Two fires and two shots. That's not bad. So, we've got four kills and over 4,000 damage done. Let me just accelerate this game a little bit. We can see that our north flank has been lost. And they've still got two tier 9 heavy tanks available. Here we can see we're able to put long range shots in on the Tiger P. I want to keep advancing between my shots. Trying to get better shots on him. I don't think I can hit him anymore, and he's not even that important. Tier 7 heavy tank is not my priority. I want to try and make sure I win this game before the heavy tanks I thought were going to be able to push into our base. Our artillery have had a fairly strong game so far. So I was thinking, I know where the Tiger P is, I know where the E75 is. I think the AMX 5120 is up north as well. I haven't seen the T34 yet though. I'm thinking artillery over this corner. Let's get ready to get them. Nope, no scumbags here. Scumbag sweep clear. Let's move on. And we spot our first one, and he doesn't spot us. It's evident that he has six cents because he's pulling back. So he's obviously got six cents and known that he's been spotted. We can tell he's a fairly good player by looking at his stats. So it's likely that he does have six cents. These are the kind of things that are going through my mind. I fire a blind shot there because I think he's pulled back and he is an absolute bus of a tank. Fortunately, we didn't hit him with that shell, but we're going to toast him with our second shell. And I'm thinking, ah, the artillery is going to get him, the artillery is going to get him. But my great rate of fire means that we can put our second shell into the tank. With the 105, we might not have been able to secure the kill there with the long reload time and the artillery might have landed on him. But equally, we might have alphaed him down with a really high roll in the first shot. It swings the roundabouts, really. The extra alpha on the 105 is better in certain situations, as is the extra penetration. I personally prefer the extra DPM on the 20-pounder, and I'm more or less able to put in all my shots against non-tier 10 tanks. So here's that Tiger P that we spotted earlier. One into his side. He fires HE at our turret, which is a dubious tactic. We put in our second shot. And I'm thinking, top gun, top gun, top gun. Luckily, the artillery didn't manage to take him out. So yeah, there's our Centurion 7-1 game. Let's look at some post-game stats. We can see that we hit 24 out of 28 shots, which means that we can get a sniper medal for that. With only 86% accuracy, that was a pretty close one. And we got the top gun with six kills. We got 4,800 experience for our double, which means that we've got 2,407 experience with a premium account as a non-double. Um, we did 5,246 damage, which were, was pretty heavy. And when we look at who did the damage on our team, we can see that it was quite a lot of it was done by the artillery. And really, this was this was another power carry in the Centurion Mark 7 slash 1. Um, I absolutely adore this tank with a 20 pounder. I will never use the 105 on this tank unless maybe I'm playing in a platoon and I can rely on people. I feel that I need the extra DPM on the 20 pounder to get me out of trouble against lower tier tanks. Remember that the Centurion Mark 7 slash 1 does not have very good armor. So one of the most frustrating things in the tank 
is if like say a tier 7 medium just attacks you like full on zerg then he might be able to trash you for half your health before you're able to take him down with the 105 for example whereas I know at least if I've got the extra DPM with the 20 pounder which is more than capable of going through any tank frontally apart from tier 10 tanks um, I know I've got the DPN to take them down before they take me down. Plus, one of the key things for me is the aim time. I think the aim time off the top of my head, without looking at the stats right now, on the 105 is 2.3 seconds, whereas with the 20 pounder it's 1.9 seconds. This means you can fire on the move a lot more accurately. This means you can pop out around a corner, zero in, shoot and pull back. And also, I like the fact that I know that I can shoot twice or even three times before certain tanks can get a shot in at me. I know that I can fire at, for example, a T110E4 three or four times between his shots. I know that I can shoot a T54 as we saw in that game twice between his shots. Um, other heavy tanks, it doesn't work out quite so well for you. For example, if you were to say be against uh, an IS-8 which has got a rate of fire of slightly over five with a high alpha gun, that means that you can't really squeeze in the second shot reliably but at least you've got the momentum to be able to flank them anyway guys I hope you appreciate this kind of post game analysis it takes me a little while longer to do it so if you want me to keep doing stuff like this then think about giving me a like at the bottom um, if this is your first time watching me think about subscribing to the channel and if you didn't know already I live stream Tuesdays, Thursdays and Sundays on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby at 1800 hours Central European summertime at the moment. So guys, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and good luck on the battlefield and hopefully I'll see you again.